Hey everybody, welcome to Don't Copy That Floppy. I'm your host Lex. I'm your other host Dan. We are your weekly video game news podcast uh, here on Chipit Radio at chipit.net. Uh, we broadcast every week from 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, live, talking about video game news. Um, this week in particular, talking about the Game Awards. So much Game Awards. It just happened last night. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, and Steam. Did I forget something? Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, and Steam. Nope, that's it. That's it. <laughs> I got them. I got them. <laughs> got them all. We're good. Uh, so yeah, check us out on all those places, um, and check us out every week from 7 to 8. Um, we got a bunch of stuff to talk about, so what are we going to start with? We're going to start with some... Kickstarter news. Even, but not well, even on Kickstarter. It's definitely actually. Indiegogo. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. Uh, then we got a whole bunch of stuff about the Game Awards. Oh, so Beyond good. just the winners. So much drums. There were There's drama so bombs <laughs> just got <laughs> dropped uh, um, during the Game Awards. Um, people instigating hostilities. Yeah. It got real. Um, but also uh, a lot of great uh, trailers for um, some upcoming games, some DLC stuff. Uh, really, uh... Kind of just little things. Yeah, just lots of little things. Yeah, some but new announcements. All of them were pretty interesting. Uh, yeah. Plus, outside of the Game Awards, we have uh, some news about some developers making some new games that we're extremely excited about. Yep. Um, upcoming, uh, some upcoming game releases that we already knew about as well. Um, also, a little bit of information about the Shovel Knight Amiibo. Oh, really? We have Shovel Knight We have Knight actual amiibo. info about it. There's a trailer for it and everything. Oh, yes. Because it's such a cool, awesome Amiibo that it deserves a trailer. And actually, a lot of its functionality is really cool. <laughs> so, uh, that's cool. And we have a little thing about a, a GTA V mod as well. Oh, yeah. That's like, I want to talk about it just because, like, wow. It's impressive. Wow. Um, first things first, though, um, we've talked the last few weeks, um, about, uh, Lab Zero's crowdfunded role-playing game, uh, Indivisible, which is, uh, it's an action RPG by the people who made Skull, Skull Girls. um, it's like a side-scrolling yeah, Super Metroid, Valkyrie profile sort of game. Uh, they had a $1.5 million funding goal on Indiegogo. They weren't gonna make it. They applied for a 20-day extension on their funding time, and now, with only nine hours left in their funding, eight hours left in their funding, they are at 1.7 million of that, oh, seven, 1.77 7 million yeah. um, of their uh, $1.5 million goal. So they made it, and a lot of people didn't think they were going to. I was pretty skeptical about it myself for a while there. Yeah, it's um, it, it, we when we talked about it before, it was interesting because it was really the opposite of how most um, crowdfunding campaigns w would work. Yes, because most of those campaigns, you'll get that huge influx at the beginning, yes. and then by the time you get to like your last two weeks, no one cares anymore. You're not really getting any donations. But for this, it was just like a steady but very slow stream. Yeah, it just kept yeah, going. I just needed that extra time yep. to really get there. Um, they had some stretch goals. Nothing huge. Um, the only one they made was more music by their composer, which is nice. Um, we're not getting an animated opening movie. We are not getting full voiceover for oh my all gosh. characters. Titmouse was going to make the opening animation? Yeah. They do all the Adult Swim stuff. Is that the people? Who yeah. Oh, okay. That would have been amazing. Oh, man. Oh, and then no. the last stretch goal was multiple endings and a hardcore bonus dungeon. So the game's going to have one ending, I'm assuming that means. But whatever. Lots of RPGs do. Uh, so they reached that stretch goal. The nice thing is, um, they said upon reaching funding, funding, they made a partnership with a company. I now can't remember the company's name. Who is going to give them another two million dollars towards the game, provided they met their goal in the first place, which they did now. So, oh yeah, I remember they get them. A nice big chunk of money to make this game with, which is great. That's good for them. Um, and they got a bunch of crossover characters with other uh, indie games like Hyperlight Drifter. Um, their own game, Skullgirls, uh, Shovel Knight, tons of cool stuff. Sweet. Um, so that's awesome. Good for them. Look forward to the game. And if you want to see an idea of what it's like, they have a playable prototype available that you can download and just play as oh. much as you want. Oh, yeah, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, that was, they put it out like, right when the crowdfunding started. Um, also on Indiegogo, where it was not before, 
Um, this is a uh, one we a story we didn't get to last week because we didn't. Oh, I didn't even know about this. Um, the Dragon's Lair uh, movie was on Kickstarter or Kickstarter for a like a proof of concept. Yeah, for a Dragon's Lair movie by uh, Don Bluth and Gary Goldman, and it, uh, uh, it failed pretty bad. It didn't do good. Um, but I don't think it. F- I don't think it finished. They canceled it before it like officially finished. Yeah. Um, it wasn't doing very well. Um, they needed five hundred fifty thousand, and they. I can't remember where they got to before they canceled it. I'm sure we can find it here. Uh, they oh. were at like 240,000. Uh, that's actually um, much farther than I thought they made. Yeah. It, so but... um, they probably had a little burst there. But they uh, canceled the funding on Kickstarter, didn't give any specific reasons why, and then restarted the campaign on Indiegogo. Um, and have said that they were going to be taking into account a lot of things that people had suggested as far as this campaign goes to, like, make it be more successful. Um, currently, they have raised 162000 on Indiegogo with 42 days left, and interestingly, their goal is much lower. It's the number that they made it to on Kickstarter. Yes. Yeah. 250. And it says flexible funding, which means that it will receive all funds raised even if it does not reach its goal. Yes, which is usually yeah. a thing that people usually do on Indiegogo. Indiegogo. Yeah. So... I am curious as to why their base goal was so much lower on Indiegogo now. Yeah, and I that's don't think strange. they said anything about it. They I mean, just started like, the campaign as we discussed before with um, when we first talked about this. Uh, a lot of people are not very excited about it because it's not actually like you pay this money and then we make a Dragon Slayer movie. Right? It's you pay this money and we will make a short that we can shop around to studios to try and convince them to give us the money to make a Dragon's Lair movie. Exactly. So the choice as to whether the Dragon's Lair movie actually happens or not is not really in the hands of the fans that are donating <laughs> the money. Yeah. So it really doesn't incentivize you right. to donate. Um, other than just being like, well, hopefully it'll happen, so I'll give a little money. Right, right. Um, one thing I will say that I appreciate is one of my biggest problems with their Kickstarter was that it was called Dragon Slayer the Movie, was the name of the Kickstarter campaign, which is very misleading. Because that's not what it was. It's not what it was. And you don't want people to see that and knee-jerk donate, because that's what they think it is. Um, so this time they've called it Dragon Slayer Returns, which I think is a much better name. Yeah, that is better. Because they're like, Dragon Slayer's coming back. How is it coming back? Read more to find out. That's much better. That is a lot better. It's a lot better. And it's much and it's easy to remember still. Yeah. Like yeah. that was a big thing. And I'm sure that's one of the suggestions that was apparently given to them before they restarted this. Um so we'll see where this goes. They've got they're already like sixty percent of the way there, and they have forty two days left. If they just get the same people who donated last time, they'll make it because yeah. they set their goal to half of what it yeah. was. So we'll see how this all shakes out. All the cats spooky creeping open that door. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, Dragon's Lair. Check it out. It's still it's still around. <laughs> there's a, there's another Indiegogo related piece of news that I think was announced at the Game Awards. So I don't know if you want to talk about it with all of our other Indiegogo. Talking stuff. about the uh, the thing by Mr. Schaefer or something else? Yeah. Because that's not on Indiegogo. It's no, it's on Fig. Yeah, it's but it works the same way. It's still crap. Okay, yeah. Why don't we talk about that now then? Um, wherever... So do you know who Tim Schafer is? You don't? What, you fool? You stupid idiot? Yeah. Crespi. Come on. Go jump off a bridge into some sharks. And then play a Tim Schafer video game. (laughs) Play play (laughs) Rupert Fandango after you die. After you're dead, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Most recently he did Broken Age, which was a Kickstarter-funded game. Um... (laughs) I can't. There's so, a cookie in my bag. And your oh, she knows. It. Don't let her get it. She needs that stuff. She loves. She loves baked goods. <laughs> She's Dad's gonna cat, steal your bag. This cat loves baked goods. She does. She steals banana bread and muffins like all the time. Well, you're gonna want to keep that close. Keep mm. it secret. Keep it safe. I got that cookie on there. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, Mr. Schaefer took the stage at the Game Awards. To announce something that I never thought would ever get announced ever in the history of time, which is a sequel to Psychonauts. Yeah, a sequel to Psychonauts. But I'm psyched because Psychonauts is great. The announcement trailer trailer's amazing. It's really funny. It's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Cause like I was like, what the hell is this? 
And then there was some little thing that tipped me off, and I was like, is this Psychonauts? Can that be happening? And then the Psychonauts characters just jump on the just, screen. They're right there, and I was like, what? <laughs> so, it is not just getting made, though. Um, like we said, it's being crowdfunded through this newer <laughs> crowdfunding platform called Fig, which I'd never heard of. Um, oh, wow. Apparently JavaScript is used heavily on their website. <laughs> oh, no. Um, indeed it is. <laughs> um, uh, and the interesting thing about this uh, crowdfunding source is it allows you to invest oh, in the game. That's interesting. Which means that if you give, I'm assuming, a significant amount of money and invest in it, you're going to get money from its success. Ooh. Which is very interesting. And it's you don't I mean you don't see it with other crowdfunding stuff, obviously. One so. of the things that he talks about in the announcement video are mm -hmm. the sales numbers, which yes. are really interesting. Yep. So when it was originally released and had its like original print run um, on the Xbox and PS2, I think mm -hmm. uh, they sold around five thousand five hundred thousand copies, which is pretty good. It's fine for not like a huge yeah AAA game. Yeah. Um, and then after two thousand and ten, the rights were reverted to his studio, Double yeah. Fine, um, for publishing. So they re-released it on Steam and, 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 double, and, and yeah, and good old game stuff. Uh, and apparently from between 2010 and 2015... So 1.2 million more copies. That's crazy. That's nuts. That's so much more. <laughs> so the total unit sales is 1.7 million, which is great. That's terrific. Um, so people obviously... The, the game obviously has longevity. People want it. People like this game. It's a cult hit, just like every other game Tim Schafer makes. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I played it back when it came out, and I loved it. I it was, thought yeah. it was terrific. It's fantastic. It's really funny. It's fun to play. Like, it's unique. Yeah, it has great art direction. Oh, it's super weird. It's like Invader Zim-esque. It is very Invader Zim-esque. Which is also funny, because the guy who voices the main character also voices Zim. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so it's a weird connect there. Um, oh, look. Tim Schafer could be hugging us. Oh. <laughs> Tim Schafer's weird. He's a weird guy. <laughs> but, uh, but no, so I guess the, the the sequel is supposed to be about what the continuing adventures of the main character yeah. as, a, as a psychic secret agent. As a psychonaut, because he yeah. like becomes one at the end of the game. Yeah. So, that would be sweet. Uh, spoiler alert for a 10 year old game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oh, they have crowdfunding. Also, also, in the release video, they have all the voice actors being like, I'm into it. And then Jack Black is like, I'm into it. Wait, this is the one I was in, right? <laughs> it is not. He it was, is, in, it it was not. in Brutal Legend. It was in Brutal Legend. Game. Uh, so the funding goal is $3.3 million. Uh, they're at 1.3, like 1.36 ish. Uh, and they got 34 days left. And it's just started like yesterday. Yeah, it just started yesterday. They're doing fine. They're, they're, they're going to do it. Right up it's going to do it. <laughs> um, I hope it does. I want it. I want a sequel to Sega. That would be great. I'm not going to invest in it, but I want it. I kind of want to invest in it. <laughs> See if it does well. We make a few bucks. Yeah. 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 So, uh, do we want to talk about... Did we have any non-Game Awards stuff? Yes, about. do we want to just cram all that in before we talk about the game? Yeah, awards? let's do that. Okay. Um, okay, so that starts here. This is quick things. Um, the development developer of Life is Strange um, mm -hmm. has shared details on their next title. Yeah. It is called Vampire. Vampire, spelled the cool way. The really cool way. The Y. Um, it is a <laughs> uh, British vampire role playing game. They've, they've only released concept art right yes, now. There's a little concept trailer. Yeah. It's neat. Though. Yeah, the concept art looks great. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's set, you your play a surgeon during the 1918 Spanish flu epidemic in London, and yet you take on both fantastical and human antagonists using your vampiric powers and weapons like saws and surgical tools. Ooh. Ooh. That sounds neat. But yeah, you, so you apparently like con. Uh, you, you become a vampire. Yes. But then a lot of the moral choices in the game are like, do you feed or not? And they say um, you have to feed, though. At some you point. You can't escape being a vampire. That's how being a vampire is. You're a vampire. I know. Tough. Yeah. <laughs> um, We've all been there. Yeah. But I was a vampire for a little while in high school. It was rough. <laughs> it was a tough time. I had to feed. I hated it. School lunches are terrible. 
<laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so, uh, and they talk about how, uh, the, depending on who you feed on and, like, kill is going to yeah. have um, ramifications. I'm, I'm wondering how much this is going to be a game like Life is Strange or Telltale stuff. Uh, and how much it's going to be, like, a more role-playing game role-playing game. Yeah. Uh, because they call it a role-playing game, which suggests to me that maybe it will be a bit more gameplay-heavy. Especially when they say, like, using weapons and mm. things. But since we haven't seen any gameplay, we've only seen concept art. It's Just hard to make any decisions there. No. Yeah. It looks interesting. I'm keeping a look out for it. Now it looks really interesting. Oh, I got our favorite news of the week. It's pretty great. Uh... Our good friends at Platinum Games, makers of such fine entertainment as, as Bayonetta, Wonderful One Hundred and One, Metal Gear Rising, Revengeance, Transformers, Transformers Devastation, <laughs> yeah. most recently, has been contracted by Activision once again to make a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. But here's the kicker: it's this not, is the catch, though. It's yeah. not just a any teen. This isn't just Michael Bay's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or like or, or the like old a cartoon beat 'em up game. This isn't Turtles in Time. This is supposed to be an M-rated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Yeah. So because <laughs> because um this company is so awesome. Yes. I'm really hoping that the game is just the first, like, three trade paperbacks of the original comic run. That are more violent. They're super and, yeah. violent. Like, for those who don't know, Ninja Turtles started off super hyper-violent because the whole thing... It was, was really gritty. Yeah, yeah, it was supposed to... It came out in the 80s, and it was supposed to be a joke on the stuff that Frank Miller was making. And right. back then, he was making stuff like Sin City. And you can tell that from the art style as well. Yeah. It's got and the black so it, and white and red. So it looked like, like Sin City, or he's run on Daredevil more specifically... Uh, and it was like hyper violent. <laughs> um, this cat. Oh my god, this cat's cat. getting into more stuff. This cat just can't stop making noise <laughs> and trying to steal cookies. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, we, we're getting that gritty. That's what side. it seems like. Yeah. It seems like. I mean, I'm assuming if it's going to be an M rated Ninja Turtles game, that's what they're going to go for. Um, and knowing how good Platinum is at doing visual stylization and stuff like that, I mean, you look at Transformers Devastation. That did look just like the old show. It looks super great. Like, so they do a black and white with red kind of style like that, cel-shaded style for this game. That'd be amazing. That'd be so good. That'd be super cool. Um, I'm hyped for that. Uh, meanwhile, they're still working on Scalebound for Xbox One, Star Fox Zero for Wii U, and Mirror Automata for PlayStation 4. Man, they're a busy studio. They're a busy studio, and they're doing stuff for everyone. Which is awesome, because they're so good at their jobs. <laughs> like, you want a video game? Get Platinum to make it. They make really video gamey video games. <laughs> um, so that's great. Um, the second chapter of the new King's Quest game is coming out in mid-December. Um, now, I know that I wondered a couple times. I heard, remember when it came out, like, a few months ago. The first episode, and I was like, oh, cool, the first episode of the new King's Quest came out. And since then, a couple times, I've been like, has another episode of the King's Quest game come out? And I kept forgetting to check. The answer is no. No other episode has come out yet. But the second one's on its way. Um, and apparently I wasn't the only person wondering where the hell it was. Um, but the, uh, the Odd Gentleman, the studio that's been making it, has told Polygon, this is an article from December 1st, um, that they have been sticking to their plan and that this was scheduled to launch uh, this fall sometime before... Well, they say this fall, but then they say sometime before the end of the year. So it's a little vague on their part. Uh, but um, they, they want us, he wanted to stress, like, we're not doing this like Telltale Games where it's a hard cliffhanger between episodes. Each episode is its own self-contained story, but those stories are all going to come together at the end. So it's not the kind of thing where you get the cliffhanger and you're like, but what happens next? You get an episode of this King's Quest game and it apparently finishes and then you move on to the next story. So having a longer time between releases isn't that bad in that case. You're not going to like, it's not going to have people lose interest as much. Um, he does also say that future chapters will be rolling out at a quicker pace. So we'll see if that happens or not. <laughs> um, I'm interested in this King's Quest game. I am a little annoyed that apparently they're taking their time with it because I want to play it when it's all out. Um, was the plan. So, but apparently that's going to take a little while. Uh, in other news, uh, the Shovel Knight Amiibo has been given a release date 
and they did a little trailer for it showing off the features. Um, it's going to come out on January 8th. It's going to be the standard price of $12.99. They haven't said if it's like a retailer exclusive, so I'm assuming it's just a general release, which is good because that means I'll actually be able to get it. Um, uh, speaking of, Corinne got me a Shulk Amiibo. Oh. It was found, even though GameStop did their best to make sure nobody had it. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, so, Shovel Knight, which recently released their expansion pack for free, um, is going to have this amiibo added to it. Um, this amiibo adds you new customization options for your character as well as weapons. So there's new abilities and stuff you can use that they show off in the trailer. And you can change Shovel Knight's color and make it so there's little sparkly trailing off of him or like... You can make them all red hot and fire go trails after them. It's just little cosmetic things. The big thing, though, is it enables a co-op mode for the entire game so you can play through it with a friend. That's oh, great. That is great. That's super cool. And they show it off a ton in the trailer, and it looks like it works really well. Like, that's a, that's a really good incentive for getting the little amiibo for it. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's not up for pre-order yet anywhere, um, but I'm going to be keeping my eye on that, because I definitely want it. Um, and if it's coming out next month, it's got to go up soon. Uh, Tecmo Koei, or Koei Tecmo, whatever way you want to say it, has responded to the Dead or Alive Extreme 3 controversy. There was a controversy? There was a controversy. This game's not coming out in the West. It's oh, did not... we talk about that? I think we might have briefly. Yeah, but we it's... didn't actually care that much. No. <laughs> but it's interesting still. I think it's interesting. Um, the game's not coming out in the West, and a lot of people kept asking them, why is this not coming out in the West? Why is this not coming out in the West? And the response on the official Dead or Alive Facebook page was, do you know how many issues happening in video game industry with regard to how to treat female in video game industry? Uh, we this do is not, a great translation. We do not want to talk those things here, but certainly we have gone through in last year or two to come to our decision. Thank you. So essentially, he's like, our game is super sexist, and we know and if we, we release don't it in America, deal with that shit. yeah, if we know if we release it in America, they'll get pissed at us because it's clearly sexist. So yeah, we just won't so we're release just it there. Not doing it, I'm like, and, oh my god. In my opinion, that's fine. Like, it makes sure. sense. Like, like. <laughs> It makes perfect sense. Um, today, from this article, which means December 1st, on this Polygon article, Tecmo Koei actually responded um, themselves and said, The comments made by an employee regarding Dead or Alive Extreme 3 on the official Facebook page only reflect that individual's opinion. Even though it was on the official page. Even though it was page. on the official page. And not the opinion or business strategy of Koei Tecmo. We remain focused on delivering the best in fighting entertainment. Fighting entertainment. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> The butt battle minigame. To our fans around the world, while consciously respecting and strategizing to support different global audiences the Dead or Alive franchise lends itself to, it remains in development and is still planned for release in Japan and Asia only. Mm. So, their answer is, you're not getting it, but we're a business, we're going to make games anyway for you, I guess. Cool fighting games like Dead or Alive Extreme 3. <laughs> Um, so everything that employee said was completely true. Pretty much. <laughs> but it represents only his personal opinion. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. If you want Dead or Alive Extreme 3, you're going to have to import it, which many websites like Play Asia will be happy to do. Because a bunch of retailers were saying, we're not going to carry this game even as an import. We're not going to do it. And this website, Play Asia, which I've actually ordered stuff off of before, said, we'll do it. You can buy it through us, and tons of people went on their Twitter and yelled at them, and were like, how could you support this? And they're like, we don't care. We don't care. <laughs> like, come on, if you want Dead or Alive Street 3, just come on, we got it. <laughs> so good for them, they'll make a killing. It's almost um, weirdly refreshing, too, when someone said, calls a company sexist, the company's like, yeah, we're cool with it. We're fine <laughs> with it. We carry Japanese goods, of course we are. <laughs> yeah, like, we know, it doesn't bother us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, so our last non-game awards story. Oh, I had another really small one. Oh, do you? The um, I think it was, I posted it on our Facebook, but it was about um, Red Dead Redemption. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll talk. It's about really, that first, it's really quick because it's just a rumor. Yes. Um, it's actually I I seriously doubt it's actually happening, 
Uh, yeah. But there was a rumor, uh, this dude, and this is where it gets a little confusing. A guy named uh, Danny Ross, who used to be on the Opie and Anthony radio show in Los Angeles, but hasn't worked for them for a while. <laughs> Apparently, after he left their station, uh, Rockstar hired him to be uh, a, the radio host for the radio stations in some of the GTA games. Yeah. Uh, so you may know him probably more so from that than from Opie and Anthony. Yeah, he but, voiced uh, Laszlo in, like, GTA 3 uh, and stuff. Um, and uh, he still has... The the theory behind this rumor is he still has some affiliation with Rockstar and knows what's going on there. Yeah. Um, but he tweeted uh, when... He tweeted that he... She made a tweet that said, really, question mark, dumbass, comma, really, question mark, two. Which is a weird... So, it was, and it was in response to somebody asking if he knew what Rockstar was working on next. Yes. Uh, and Reddit has taken that and done their crazy conspiracy detective RDR2. work. RDR2. RDR2. Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. Now, this is just a rumor, but Red Dead Redemption was a freaking smash hit. Yeah. Everyone loves that game. Why would they not? It's true. It's just weird that Danny Ross would be talking about it, because why would he know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but at the same time, like, and even if this ends up not being anything, like him talking about this, they're gonna make a sequel to that game. Eventually. They're definitely yeah. going to. Like, that game was did way too well for them for them not to. And it's a great game. I'd like a sequel. Um. So yeah, I mean, time will tell. Reddit Redemption 2. Let's get it. Although I like how someone pointed out uh, Red Dead Redemption is itself a sequel to Red Dead Revolver. Yes. Right? So it would really be, sh- be Red Dead 3. Sh- okay. <laughs> Danny Ross doesn't know. <laughs> doesn't understand how it works. Uh, Red Dead Redemption is not even really... It's, it's I guess, technically a sequel, but it's like, those games are super different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, speaking of Rockstar, some guy put together this GTA 5 PC mod... This man named Josh Romito put together the Pinnacle of V. <laughs> mod. That's a hell of a title. Uh, and this is a hell of a mod. Yes. So this mod is first and foremost a visual um, remaster of the entirety of Grand Theft Auto V. It adds in like 4K textures, um, tons of other visual improvements with like sprites and particle effects and things like that. Um, and every other aspect of the game has been tweaked as well, including, like, vehicle handling, um, the in-game, like, AI relationships yeah, between, that's what like, I was NPCs and the player and that, stuff. That's actually what I was most impressed by, because yeah. the graphic stuff is super impressive. But now really they have nice. it so, like, gangs and police will have fights yeah. on the street. That's so cool. Like, and you can, like, stand near pedestrians for a longer period of time without them running away, because of the way the weird AI used to work. Um, bullets now travel at realistic speed instead of being instant hit. Yeah. Which is probably, like, way more processing to do. Yeah. (laughs) Um, the population levels everywhere have been improved. There's just tons more people in the game, too, to make it feel more like a city. The weapons have all been totally reworked, as well as how, like, destructive certain things are, and you can shoot through, like, thin metal wood and plastic and things now. Like, this is absurd, even all the weapon sounds have been replaced with better weapon sounds. Like, it's ridiculous. And it's all in 4K. It's all in 4K. You can look at the screenshots of this, and they are freaking gorgeous. Oh my god. They're so pretty. Because GTA V is already a good-looking game. It was now it's, like, game. photorealistic. Look at that! It's look so that nice. picture! Oh my god, you guys the, can't see it. The leaves are real. They do! They look real! It's incredible! Even as I like the speedboat on the water, it's just like, oh, it's so pretty. It's so, so pretty. Um, so I looked up, because I was curious, like, what do you need to run this mod? And I was reading people who have, like, 4 gig video RAM, 16 gig RAM, like, setups with, like, i7 cutting-edge processors who are still experiencing crashes every so often while running this, depending it's on what they're doing. too much! Um, but other people saying, like, it crashes every so often, but, like, it runs. If you have, like, a supercomputer. <laughs> this cat. 
Oh my god, this your cat, cat is, is like everywhere. A mess right now. Our whole show <laughs> is ruined. Um, this is actually one of those things that, in like a couple of years, when I mean GTA Five was actually on a really solid steam steam sale yeah. over the holiday, yeah. but in like a couple of years when computers like this are more common, are more common, and it's like on sale for like ten bucks. Yeah. Oh my god, you'd be you'd be a fool not to get this. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> I don't know what more needs to be there. Like, look at that. Wow. It looks so good. That's it's bonkers. Um So let's get into the game awards. Because we got a whole bunch. Um do you want to start with the winners? Yes, let's start with the winners. So I have a I'm looking at a polygons quick winner example. list. Yeah, yeah, from Polygon. So we're looking at the same thing. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, going down the list, the best family game, uh, Super Mario Maker, which I think we kind of expected. Something like that, yeah. Uh, uh, best fighting game was, uh, Mortal Kombat X. Also kind of expected. Yeah, I expected that to take it. Um, best multiplayer game, uh, Splatoon. This one I was, uh, not so sure about. I mean, I'm glad Splatoon won. I think that's cool. It's original and been successful. It's... Cool. But I mean, some of the other things up for this were what was like Halo 5, I think, yeah. and, and like Destiny. But what I, a lot of what I've been hearing about Halo 5 is that it's pretty underwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not that great. Like, uh, and Destiny, it's been around for a while now. Yeah, I, I feel like if it, like, this was last year, then Destiny probably had a better chance. Yeah. yeah. Um, best mobile handheld game, Lara Croft Go. That's bullshit. Yeah, it is. Get out of my face. Change this category. For freak's sake. It's like, like it, it's, you should not be lumping phone games together with, like, DS RPGs. DS games. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate got robbed. <laughs> uh, best uh, esports team of the year? Optic Gaming. Optic Gaming. Those they guys we all stage. love. Oh, the dude who announced that was Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. And then, like you were saying... Yeah, one of the guys, they walked up and one of the guys on the team just went for a hug with Shaq. Immediately. Immediately. He made the right choice. He did. It's the only time you'll get to hug Shaq. Uh, Esports Player of the Year, Kenny, Kenny S. Shrub. It's an original screen name. Yeah, his screen name, God. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's better than, like, XX Dark Kenny or something. <laughs> XX Dark Kenny. Uh, <laughs> from Team NVUS or NVUS, I guess. I don't know enough about esports to Neither be able to comment I. too much on that. But, esports um, Game of the Year, Counter-Strike, Counter-Strike. Mobile Offensive. Now, I was sure that a MOBA would be that out. Me too. I was shocked that that won. Yeah. Why? Good for Counter-Strike, I guess. Most anticipated. No Man's Sky. Not a surprise Shocking to anyone. No one. <laughs> but No Man's Sky will be anticipated for the next, like, ten years. Um... <laughs> Best but narrative. it's coming out next year. No, it's not. Sure it is. <laughs> Best narrative. Her, Her story. story. My Sam Barlow, uh, which was accepted by the actress in the game. Yes. Because um, uh, uh, I guess he couldn't be there for Viva reasons. Viva Cipher. I think it's just pronounced Cipher. Okay. Um, uh, trending gamer. Greg Miller. Greg Miller. Um, I expected PewDiePie. First so, of all. We both did, yeah. Well, because he won. didn't win last year. Exactly. Like, there's no they're way PewDiePie doesn't win. They're not going to give it to Total Biscuit again, so they're going to give it to PewDiePie. Yeah. Like, but no, so uh, Greg Miller, who... I had not heard of. I had heard of him vaguely. Like, I hadn't watched his uh, YouTube or Twitch stuff. Or, yeah. Um, but I had seen him on IGN. Cause yeah. He, he, um, he doesn't do videos. only gaming stuff, either. That's true. He actually does a lot of other things as well. Um, but his, I think his acceptance speech was, was probably, great. yeah, it was probably one of my highlights When of the we night. started talking about um, the show when you got here tonight, um, that was one of the first things you mentioned, and I agreed completely, um, that his acceptance speech was stellar. And at first I was like, where's he going with this? And then I was like, oh, he's going, he's being a really cool guy. Yeah. I'm telling you, for any, like, if you want the clip crib note version of it, like, he basically just said, like, it's fine to appreciate everybody at these award shows and everything, but appreciate all the people who worked on these games. Yeah. Like, all these environmental artists, all these, like, yeah, his, sound design folks. And his analogy was and so animators. great, because he starts by being like, I just play, finished playing Laura Croft, and I was watching through the credits, and, and I, I saw, saw like... particular environmental artists. And whose name, now I can't remember, but yeah. he calls them by name. Yes. And he's like, I want to thank that person, because, you know, those are the yeah. people that they get They put in long hours making yeah. these things that change people's lives, that so many people enjoy... And they're not the ones up 
at the award ceremony, like, getting anything for it. You know, that was actually interesting, speaking to the whole night, because in many instances, it was the voice actors who went up and accepted awards and not actually the devs, because they weren't One there. One in particular. One in particular. We'll get to. But we just talked about the Her Story one, yep. where the, the dev wasn't there to yeah, accept either. Yeah, the guy the story. And so it was kind of interesting that, like, those people, like, but but really, like, pay attention to the devs, because they're the most important. Like, they didn't come and pick up yeah. a lot of the awards. They're um, busy. Tim Schafer was there. Tim Schafer was there. <laughs> He'll uh, always be there. He loves it. Just he loves slightly the attention. out of frame. <laughs> <laughs> this weird face. <laughs> so joyful. He's a fun uh, guy. Best yeah. indie game was Rocket League. Rocket League. Yeah, that was cool. That's cool. I, think um, that I totally deserved it. A different one that I kind of wanted more, but that was fine with Rocket League because it's been such a phenomenon. Undertale. I kind of wanted Undertale to be yeah. more. I, I think under the fact that Undertale didn't win anything. Undertale and Bloodborne, both for me. I was really upset that neither of them got anything. Because they had both made such a big splash. There yeah. was I was watching both the, good. the pre show sort of like like uh snippets that they did with different people who were either up for awards or just like associated with the show and and a lot of them were like YouTubers and this one guy was like, Do I like Undertale? I don't know, I haven't made a decision yet. Maybe if like 4,000 more people can tell me that it's good, <laughs> then I'll be into it. <laughs> and, and I mean, that's the thing with Undertale, it's really in the internet. And I mean, this is, I guess... The word is, of mouth for that game was crazy. And th- that might have also been true for Rocket League, because Twitch made Rocket League a lot bigger. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, like, the Let's Play community just drove Undertale to success. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I would have loved to see it win something because yeah. it got so talked up and, and it got nominated for a lot of great different writing, things. Yeah, and some new ideas while still having that classic like RPG feel. It's really it's just a good game. Um, but at the same time, Rocket League um, has been it's a phenomenon. Yeah. at this point, and especially for what was it? What and it's it coming win? out on Xbox One now too. It won because it won two categories. It won best indie game and best sports racing and best game. sports racing game. And for best sports racing game, yes, sure yeah, because all those other ones are boring. Um, for best indie <laughs> game, I I like the argument that yes, it's very much an indie game, but it's also like a very simple concept that really hasn't been done yeah. very well yeah. is, and is done is executed really well. Yeah. So in that sense, I think you can easily make an argument for for, it, for indie game for yeah. best indie game. But I still would have liked to see Undertale in there. Uh, games for Impact. Which apparently was changed prior to the show, because it used to be Games for Change, even when they first announced the nominees. Oh, I've heard about that. So they changed to Games for Impact. So I guess the idea not promoting social change so much as having an impact on the video game development community. Okay. Um, Which, like a strange one, um, I guess. Sure. I kind of argue against it, because... They really just did what Telltale's been doing all yeah, this time? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. Like, I don't see that having... Granted, they did it better than Telltale's well, done it since Walking Dead. Yeah. But... <laughs> um, but it does yeah, it doesn't seem like as, as original. No. Thing. It seems like they're they're riding a wave that already existed. Right. So it seems like it would be weird for them to win that category. That being said, I'm glad they won at so worst. They, were, they deserved something. Yeah, totally. Life is Strange came together really well when all was said and done, so... Uh, Best fan creation was Portal Stories Mel, which we didn't um, know we anything didn't, about. We didn't recognize like any of the best fan yeah, creation. Yeah, I think there was things. like one or two that we knew about, and yeah. they didn't win. <laughs> uh, uh, developer of the year, CD Projekt Red. Good for them. Those Polish guys. Um, they, yeah, <laughs> that one guy. That one he guy went up, came he up. went up to the stage a whole lot <laughs> with his jeans and his t-shirt. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, good for them. That's great. You know, um, it was interesting. I was actually when they were announcing the nominees, I was thinking about that category, and I was like. How were, because for Developer of the Year, Nintendo was up there. Nintendo was up there. And Nintendo was the only one who had made multiple games. Yes. So I was like, did they deserve it just because they've been putting out more content? At the same time, this past year, most of the games Nintendo's put out haven't been that amazing. No. All their real big, big hitters are coming out like... Next year. Yeah, like, Mario Maker was nominated for a ton of stuff, and I don't think it should have been yeah. at all. Um, but the fact they made that and Splatoon... Yeah, are both, like, good. They're both good. But nothing else this year is that remarkable. 
Yeah. I mean, even Xenoblade Chronicles X, which is the last big Wii U thing this year, wasn't made by Nintendo. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm just saying, if the category is best dev in the sense of, like, how much content the dev has been putting out, because yeah. if you're talking about how good the game itself so is, it's there's quantity, other categories for Right, that. you're arguing, like, a quantity quality Yeah, kind of thing. because the other categories seem to fit the, yeah. the, the, quality, the quality side standard. of it. Yeah. Right. So I would have actually liked Nintendo for that. Yeah, more. yeah. Um, I was fine as long as Bethesda didn't win. Well, yeah. They need to fix their goddamn engine. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, like, like, uh, I'm I'm blanking on the Assassin's Creed guys. Is that Ubisoft? Ubisoft. Yeah, they need to fix their goddamn. Yeah, if they had won, that would have been a travesty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't think were they even nominated. I don't think they were. I don't think so. They um the blah, the new Assassin's Creed was nominated for best action adventure. Yeah, it ha- it was in yeah. some categories. It didn't um, win anything. Well, best art direction was Ori in the Blind Forest. I can get behind that. It, that game gorgeous did video have game. Great art direction. And great game. Yeah. I I feel like my my apprehension towards it is because Bloodborne didn't win anything. And I really liked. Uh, Tomb Raider for that because yeah. I think the art direction in Tomb Raider was really nice. It was good. Um, I mean, I thought it was also good in Bloodborne. Um, yeah. but that was that was a tough category. There were a lot of really there's, deserving there's, games in yeah, there. Yeah, there was some there was strong competition. Yeah. for that category for sure. Um, so um, best action adventure game went to Metal Gear Solid Five, to which I say good. Yeah, because I would have had a lot of problems if MGS Five had won Game of the Year. It, I think it was up for art direction too. It was, which I didn't understand. I didn't understand that at all. Because the that art direction, it's bad. no, but it's unremarkable. Yeah, it's like it's mil- it's like military military stuff, stuff. and it looks and, good. and a couple of really weird things thrown. A in. couple weird things <laughs> in there, yeah. But yeah, no, the art direction of that game was wholly unremarkable. I thought it was um, it was weird that it was nominated for that. Yeah, but uh, it winning action adventure game I think was great because yeah. a lot of problems I have with the game. There are a lot of problems I have with the game that may, would have made me annoyed if it had won game of the year. But the least of those problems, by far, is the gameplay. The gameplay and all that stuff in that game is amazing. If you're looking at the game just from the action standpoint of how good it is for playing an action-adventure kind of game, it's stellar. Totally. It's amazing. So for that, good. I'm glad it won. Now, but the next one's a bit perplexing, because it's best score soundtrack, and Metal Gear Solid Five also won that. Yes. And while, again, like... It scores it's got a few is, real is standout tracks. Yeah, but beyond those, I don't know. It seemed like it compared to its competition. It I thought it was weird that it won that. Yeah, because um, it has not like my choice for it. Sins of the Father, Quiet's theme, like any of the songs in that game that have like lyrics and stuff. Yeah, are great, are amazing. Most of the other orchestral stuff is fairly. It's not that interesting. It's fine. Yeah, it's not amazing. And then a lot of the music in the game is also like '80s hits, oh, which yeah. shouldn't count. Which shouldn't but count. That's in there too. Like, um, so like I don't think it deserved to win just for those few standout tracks. And I kind of feel like that's what happened. Um, um, best performance, Viva Safer. Her story. That's who I wanted to win. Dude, yeah, she deserved it. She it's did it's great. funny because she's she's the one who actually like everybody else. Acted. Yeah, because everybody else either does voiceover or voiceover and motion capture, and motion capture. but she actually just legit acted because it was yeah. live action yeah <laughs> so she and was, she did it was really sort of, well it was sort of unfair to everyone else kind of yeah because um, she just kind of showed up everyone by virtue of the medium yeah. yeah but just the fact that like that entire game is driven around her performance yeah and she's playing multiple characters in it too like wow, like, she did such she a did good so job good. and she totally deserved that absolutely was awesome. I was really happy she won that Although there was the little flub. Yeah, I was going to say that from after. The Witcher 3. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but Game, uh, of the Game of the Year. Here's, so here are the big ones. Uh, I don't know why Game of the Year is third from the, the last in this list. It should be the last. Yeah, that's weird. But yeah, Game of the Year was Witcher 3. Yes. Which I'm fine with. I'm to- yeah, I'm cool with that. I My personal pick was Bloodborne, but whatever. Witcher um, 3 is great. Uh, best role-playing game, also Witcher 3. Uh, sure. Makes sense. Like, duh. Um, <laughs> if it's the game of the year and a role playing game, I would assume no less. Uh, and then best shooter, which w- I thought was amazing. I was so happy that it wasn't these other, like all the other. Novels. Yeah, I really didn't expect it. It was Splatoon. It was Splatoon. I did not expect Get that out at of all. Here, Call of Duty. Yeah, you got to be squid me. You got to be squid me. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, there was no love for the uh, the big the bro dude bro Call dude of Duty shooters. No, Brad, except for because Counter Strike they won. got blown. Yeah, but that's not a bro dude. No, it's shooter. not because that was popular. That's popular in like a more niche audience yeah. who were into it before the Call of Duty got big. Like, yeah. esports community. Yeah, and even before esports was big. Back when, like, just the Source engine, they made Counter-Strike Source and stuff, and people played the hell out of it on P- their PCs and had LAN parties and stuff. Um, I was I thought it was hilarious that Splatoon won Best Shooter. It was. It was I really think that's fun. great. That's fantastic. Um, so some announcements. Um, Shaquille O'Neal, we mentioned, was there, um, announcing the eSports winner. Um, Shaquille O'Neal was also announcing a sequel to Shaq Fu. Yeah. The game that everybody hoped was getting a sequel. Exactly. Um, and it looks like a beat 'em up. It doesn't look like a fighting game, which the original Shaq Fu was. Ah. Um, I never played the original Shaq Fu. I don't you should. What it was. It's god awful. Yeah, that's what I'm told. <laughs> that's why I haven't played it. Yeah. Um, but this is Shaq Fu, A Legend Reborn. Um, and it's, it, it looks like it's like a side scrolling beat 'em up game. We pretty uh, much they just got saw an animated, like, 2D animated cutscene. There's some little snippets of gameplay. A little, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I uh, mean, it but, doesn't look that exciting. But, uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. I like that when he announced it, he was like, this is the game that, you know, the first one should have been. And I'm like, I'm glad you recognize that the first one isn't good. <laughs> because... That's what kept Shaq up at night. Yeah. I wish Shaq food was better. <laughs> Gold bomb. Gold bomb, I can't power. It can heal the pain of playing Shaq Fu. <laughs> uh, uh, no oh, Shaq. Um, the next big announcement was a new Batman game. Yeah, I know Batman. what you're thinking. Oh man, Batman game. There's been a million of that. That's going to be, be Rocksteady's making a new Batman game. Yeah. They're making Arkham Dinner Time. <laughs> this is before <laughs> night. <laughs> It's a prequel. <laughs> um, but no, this is a Batman game by Telltale. I'm not excited. You know... Like, I gotta admit, I'm not excited. At first, I didn't... I, when I first heard about it, I wasn't. But when I saw the trailer, I kind of was. Because it seemed like they were actually taking, like, real-world social issues about uh, of, like, a city that is in turmoil... And then and putting that into the game. the game, so so that could have some really interesting writing in it, assuming mm-hmm. they they do that right. And like I'm sure I think you'll the play subject both, matter. I'm sure you'll play as both Batman and Bruce Wayne. Yeah, in it as well. So the Bruce Wayne segments might be kind of interesting. That's that Depending actually that do. That reminds me of that that cracked dot com video where they talk about how uh, Batman is secretly terrible for Gotham. Oh yeah, because they talk about how if Bruce Wayne stopped being a vigilante and instead yes. just invested money, being in a like, full on philanthropist, yeah, he could do more good for the yeah. city. So but he invests all his money in weird bat gadgets yeah. instead. So it'd be funny if you have that option in this game and you can save the city by just being a philanthropist and not <laughs> fighting crime. No, that would be amazing. That would be great. Um, I think the reason I'm lukewarm about it, even though I love Batman, and this like some of the ideas here, like you just said, are pretty cool. I'm just tired of Telltale games. I mean, that's fair. I think I just, that... Like, they they've hit that point where every a lot of their stuff feels very like here's your Telltale game with it. It's got a different flavor, but it's yeah. still a Telltale game. And you can tell it looks like a Telltale game. The characters act are written like a Telltale game. Yeah, the choices are written like a Telltale game. Like you, we're seen behind the curtain with Telltale games now. I think too much, and it's not helping that because everyone thinks. Or because companies think they're so awesome that they keep licensing them out with different properties right. instead of just, instead of just letting them try to make their own original thing. Right. I feel like Telltale is hit this this doldrum of making the same kind of game with a different property, which is a shame. Yeah. I I mean I think for most of the community, uh, it hasn't gotten old yet, but I think that's coming real soon. Yeah. The people are going to get real sick of it. Wonder who's going to voice a Batman in this. A better be the man from the animated series. Kevin Conroy? Better be. That's what I want. That's what it should be. That's what it should be every time. It should be. He's the best. He's so good. He is good. Great Batman. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Pretty good Batman. Ten, he, does, he doesn't have to do the... <laughs> they should just get Ben Affleck to do it. Batfleck. Batfleck. 
you see that new trailer for Batman vs Superman? I did. You know, I don't. The things I hate about that trailer do not involve Batfleck. No, me um, neither. But there's a whole lot of other things. There's a lot about. of other things. Yeah, <laughs> but that's um, for another time. That's for another time. Uh, uh, so Far Cry Primal was talked about. Yep, they showed some gameplay stuff um, and introduced more kind of the concepts of it. You're the Beastmaster. Who are the Beastmaster? That's pretty cool. Actually. You can go into. You can control the animals, right? That's yep. what it looked like. You can work them. together with them and control them. You can have a big wolf or a big kitty. Yeah, and you can ride them. You can ride them. Oh man! You can have them and eat other humans. You, you got, got your bow and arrows. You got your spears and everything. It looks pretty neat. Totally neat. Like it looks cool. It looks like as interesting as we could hope it was going to be. Um, and oh, you have an owl too. You have, like, a big owl who can do stuff for you. Um, I The second they said, you are the Beast Master, I was like, what? <laughs> Is this an 80s movie? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> uh, um, so that's cool. Um, and, like, they're sticking to, you know, like, club spears, bow and arrow, like, all that stuff. Um, uh and a, a, a bomb in the form of a hornet's nest you throw at people. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, I think it seems like they're having a lot of fun with the concept. Um, and if the gameplay follows through, great. That sounds good to me. Oh, they announced uh, DLC for uh, Rise, of the, Rise of the Tomb Raider. And it looks really cool. It's like... Um... Uh, Baba Yaga stuff? Yeah, the Russian folk tales about the witch. So, okay, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I thought that in Tomb Raider, most of the time, it was like, there's mystical stuff going on, but we're always sort of keeping it on the down low until you get farther into the game. Until you get further into the game. Because the old games, you would be like, here's some yetis. (laughs) That's true. And you fought dinosaurs in, like, one of those games. (laughs) But it seems like, for the most part, things are grounded in reality, especially with the newer ones. With the newer one, definitely. Um, with, like, the, the first new of the new ones? Yeah. Definitely. Uh, but it's funny, because with this DLC, it's just, like, si- it, silly stuff happening. Magic. Russian folklore all over the place. House with chicken feet. All you do is find monsters. Spooky monster demons in Russian forests. Uh, like, like you said, it looks like Legend of Zelda, almost. Like a more photorealistic version of Legend of Zelda. Yeah, with the chicken house and everything. She's totally. even firing a bow and arrow at one point. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, so female link. It no, but it looks uh Linkle Dan. Uh, <laughs> excuse you. <laughs> I hate that name so much. It's terrible. Oh uh, why? Just so, call her Linka. I know. Jesus. It's so easy. <laughs> uh but no, so uh I thought that this this DLC and again it uh, looks cool. art direction super on point. Yes. Definitely. Um so that was one of the cooler reveals. They revealed like a character from the new Nathan Drake Uncharted game. But that wasn't that interesting. That, I mean, it wasn't much to talk about. No. Uh, other stuff, let me see here. <laughs> they talked about Quantum Break, and it turns out the dude who played Iceman in the X-Men movies is, like, the main character in it. Yeah, I had no idea. And Quantum Break still looks completely uninteresting to me. He's like, but no, you don't understand. I get superpowers so I can control time. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I okay. assumed that's what you were doing. Yeah. That's what I was not interested in. That's I would, Yeah, I'm already not interested in that. <laughs> Um, Troy Baker made a funny joke. He did make a funny when joke. He came out about how all these other voice actors are just waiting for him and Nolan North to die. He's like, yeah, if you want it, if you, you know, for all you people at home that really want to break into voice acting, you buy yourself a really good quality yeah. microphone and then wait for me yeah, and, and Nolan, Nolan North, North to die. die. <laughs> that was very funny. It was really funny. Um, um, yeah, let's talk about, let's talk about the drums now. Okay. Well, really quick, I just want to mention, they oh, did yeah. do a tribute yeah. to Satoru Iwata. We talked about how the video was pretty meh. It was very meh. It was not great. It was just still images you could yeah. get through a Google search um, with music playing behind them. Yeah, which is interesting. Like, I like the idea of them doing the tribute to Iwata. It seems like it seemed like that part of it at least was kind of phoned in. What was really nice was Reggie's speech. Um, Reggie got up on stage, gave a nice heartfelt speech about his time with Iwata and who Iwata was from his perspective as a person wearing Nintendo. That I thought was really nice um, and just felt good. So one of the the points that he made that I thought was a really good takeaway from the speech yeah. was he talks about how Awada was fearless. Yes. Because he was like, hey, when Awada was you, pushing oh, for the... Said, do you remember when we first announced the Nintendo Wii? Yeah. And people's reactions. The Wii? Like, what? And but Awada didn't care. 
He's yeah. like, no, it's going to be big. He went for it anyway. And I'm like, you know, that is a great legacy to leave behind. Because yeah. he, you know, the, it wasn't all, it wasn't all hits. Like the Wii no. U was not, no. not exactly a hit, but he was, the, he I wasn't it, afraid to try. Yeah. And that's, things. that's something that is so rare in the game industry. Yeah. I Risk think. taking is on the, um, on the low side right now. So um, this article cool. on Polygon about this also does mention, um, Jeff Keighley also said, some stuff about his final times with Iwata. He did. He talked about this his final interview with he him. Inter- he visited him and interviewed him in uh, Kyoto mm-hmm. um, not very long before he died. Um, and it, so that was nice, kind of cool to hear, too, that, that Jeff Keighley had been so close to him right before everything and had those last moments with him. Uh, so let's finish off the show with the drama bomb. Oh, the drama bomb. The drama bomb. Which was revealed. Okay, so um, yeah. when uh, Metal Gear Solid Five won for its best big category, time. yeah, yeah, best score, um, Kiefer Sutherland had been in the whole show, yeah, um, and he walked up to accept the award. And then after he did, he gave a speech and stuff. It cut back, to which was Healy. the thing because they said numerous times before the show that Kojima was going to be there. Yeah, he was on he the was advisory on the, board. Yeah, he was on the advisory board to plan the event. Um, I think there's a tweet in here from. Uh, Keely from like five hours before the show to Kojima saying, are you ready? Are you ready to go? So this was a shock to Jeff Keely too, apparently. <laughs> five hours. Five Jesus. hours before the show. Um, so it cuts back to Jeff Keely after that acceptance. At which point he says, so... Where's the, oh, we do have, we have the quote? Do we have the direct we, quote? I think I have the direct quote here. Because I know we have the video... Ahead. But obviously, we, I mean, we could play that over, but we wouldn't be able to sync it up right. It'd be a, it'd be a disaster. Uh, so here, just keep talking about it, and I'll so he, dig it up. He, um, uh, oh, no, it's right here. Okay. okay. Um, Mr. Kojima had every intention of being with us tonight, but unfortunately, he was informed by a lawyer representing Konami just recently that he would not be allowed to travel to tonight's award ceremony to accept any awards. He is still under an employment contract, and it is very disappointing. So yeah, and following this statement, boos erupted from out of the crowd. Yeah, like he makes that statement, the whole crowd starts booing Konami, <laughs> as they should. Yeah, and Cliff Blazinski tweeted, he's like, yeah, I just started booing this myself, or I just started boo- this booing myself in here. Like, <laughs> so like, Cliffy B was like, what the hell? Oh, Cliffy B also had a fun interview earlier in the show where he didn't, where he apologized to the PC Master Race. <laughs> was like PC, I've said bad things about PC in the past. It's on the rise. I apologize for what I said. PC <laughs> is the best. But no, get back to this. Um, the uh, <laughs> yeah, he Jeff Keighley was like for the whole show. He Jeff seemed Keighley kind of... seemed like a little annoyed. Yeah. And I couldn't figure out why, because, like, last year, he was super pumped for yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. And he pretty much bankrupted but himself could, to put it on last year. So but you could totally his... tell something was really bugging him. Yeah. The whole show. And this has to have been it. Yeah, it must And have he been. was just stewing, waiting for his opportunity to be like, fuck you, Konami. Yeah, man. Because well, when him announcing this at this show is a huge middle finger to Konami. Oh, it totally is. Which and, is great. And they deserve it. I'm so glad he did it. Like, how do you not... Your game that you made is winning awards. It probably... You're not allowing the guy who made the freaking game... To go and accept them? Yeah. Oh my god. Fuck off, Konami. Jesus. You're just just such bad people. Seriously, they're assholes. (laughs) Like, it's amazing. Um, the vitriol that's been leveled at them after this is amazing, too. Which is funny, because everybody already hated them. Everyone already hated but, like, people are now just, like, non-stop posting, like, hashtag fuck Konami all over Konami's Twitter, like, non-stop. It's crazy. Um, see, just when we thought they couldn't get any worse. Because it's, and this is such a, like, what did they think was going to happen? I'm amazed at just how little they seem to care about their image at this point. Yeah, because they they've made a lot of bad PR decisions. Lately. And this is this takes the cake though. Yeah, because at least on a lot of the other ones, because they clearly have fired or are you know 
uh, Kojima's going to be fired. Yes. Um, but they've always been like, oh, no, he's he's not really, we didn't really fire him. Like, he's just no. going to leave the company later. Or, you know, he's still working for us. Whatever. They at least, like, try to sugarcoat it. Yeah. But in this case, they were just like, nah, fuck him, he can't go. Yeah. <laughs> like, how do you think people are going to react to that, dude, and, without uh, any explanation? On Kojima's English Twitter, he thanked everyone for the recognition, but that's all we've heard from that's him. That's probably all he could do. That's probably all he could do, yeah. Um, it seems like they got him by the balls. To- they totally do. Like, which is which horrible. is Which is going to be great when his contract finally ends, because he's going to talk so much shit about I them. I hope so. And it's going to be amazing. I really hope so. We're going to be doing some great stories on that. <laughs> I cannot wait. The never-ending odyssey of Kojima and Konami hating each other. Um, it's already been a months-long experience. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So those were those were the big things. Uh, I guess the last thing I I want to say about it is overall impressions of the show. Yes. Um. What did you think about it in terms of like the way everything went down? I felt it was weaker than the first show. See, so did I. Sort of. The first show had like tons of stuff going on, and there it were a was lot of very, technical issues. Yeah, but it was yeah, it had tons and tons of annoying issues. Yeah, but. It was still crammed full of content, yes. and everyone and they seemed like they were just excited to throw this content at you. Right at you. Um, this show didn't feel like that. This show felt much more like a typical award show. Yes. It was a lot more measured. It was more paced. It was much better rehearsed, and there weren't. There, I think there's only one one big technical flaw. glitch yeah. that happened. Yeah. Um, which was a, a typo, <laughs> yeah. I guess, or maybe she misspoke. We don't really know. Yeah, yeah. But for best performance, when yes. uh, uh, what's Viva her Safer won her award, they said yeah. it was for Witcher Three. Yeah, yeah, they said Viva Safer for Witcher Three, and it's like what? But the, and, <laughs> and the, the dude from CD Projekt was like, what? <laughs> like they showed him really quick, just baffled. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, but other than that, you know, it was, everything it went was, really smooth. Yeah, it did. Uh, and. But there was, in this year's show, so much product placement. And we talked a little bit before recording tonight. I mean, that's obviously because Jeff Kelly wasn't funding as much of it out of, yeah. out of pocket this time, obviously. Yeah. Um, so that kind of had to be there. But yeah, some of it was pretty, like, intrusive and obnoxious. Like, the Bud Light man on the street. Oh, God, level up with Bud Light. Level up with Bud Light, everyone. This, this guy, like, we cut oh. to this guy talking to people on the street about video games. And like you said, and some of it wasn't annoying. Like, oh, we have the gaming room sponsored by AMD. And I'm like, that's like, fine. That makes sense. Yeah. They made graphics cards. And then, like, every time they would cut to commercial, it would be the Go 90, the Go 90 yeah. thing. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, that is annoying and doesn't have really anything to but do with this. But at least it's like when they cut to commercial, that's yeah. what we see. So it doesn't interrupt the, the ceremony yeah. itself. Uh, but yeah, oof, there's a lot of ads. I mean, it's to be expected. In that way, I guess it was also like um, a typical award show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but overall, there was, was yeah, there was like some musical performances, but there were less musical performances than there were last year. Yeah, uh, and like some other fun little videos and segments. I think it was still a solid show. Totally. Yeah, I think it more stats. They also kept sort the length of the, a little more. Concise this time. Yeah. It was only last year's show was around three hours. This one was only around two, mm-hmm. um, which they promised beforehand that it would be a bit shorter, and they they stuck to it, and it still felt good. This seems like they've set a really good framework. Yes, if they can just keep operating within this framework and figure out how to jazz it up a little bit. Yeah, they're going to in future good years. Shape. Yeah, they'll be yeah. in good shape. Um, so the last thing we'll talk about is games that are coming out in the next week, and they came out in the last week, I guess. Um came up just today. I'm excited. I got my copy from Amazon.com over there. Oh, man. Xenoblade Chronicles X. Get got ready. in on that. Um, we got uh, Just Cause 3. Came out this past Tuesday. As well as Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah, I gotta um, watch some gameplay of that. I've heard some mixed things about it since its release, but I didn't read a whole lot of specifics. Yeah, I haven't really seen like all sorts of reviews for it all yeah. over yet, yeah. which is weird. Um... That Shadow Complex remastered thing apparently came out last night. Oh, when they announced when it? When they announced probably, it. Yeah. Uh, upcoming, you got the PewDiePie game. <laughs> Legend uh, of the Brofist. Legend of the Brofist on Windows and Mac. I don't know how to feel about uh, that. Devil's Third, next Tuesday. 
Uh, Get your copy. You'll love it. Lovingly baked. Don't worry, we can talk about that on the next show. We'll yeah. Plenty of time. Yeah. So not a whole lot. Xenoblade Chronicles X, that's the exciting one. Uh so yeah. Um with all that, we have gone over time as don't copy that floppy. Uh we are the weekly video game news podcast, uh broadcasting off of Chipbit Radio at chipbit.net. You can find us on all sorts of social media, such as Facebook, the big one. Uh Steam, YouTube, Twitter. And, uh, wait, what am I forgetting? iTunes. iTunes, yeah. <laughs> iTunes. Uh, yeah. and. Yeah, um, hit us up on Twitter, um, hashtag fuck Corona, right? Hashtag <laughs> At DCTF podcast. At DCTF podcast, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's good stuff. It's, it's good, good stuff. stuff. Um, so yeah, until next week, uh, when we. We'll definitely not have any more interesting game releases to talk about. We won't. But we will hopefully have some other things. Um, the PlayStation experience is happening tomorrow. Oh, yeah. That's so that's something we'll have to talk about next week. Um, but until then, um, stay tuned and listen to some nice chiptune music. And always remember, don't, don't copy, copy that floppity. Don't, don't copy, copy that floppity. floppity.